Hello. Today, we're covering a huge reason why people end up in nursing homes and how you can prevent it by not falling. Now, preventing falls doesn't come from just picking up a few rugs or having somebody fall proof your house, but it comes from treating our bodies in a way that maintains balance. Here, we discuss science backed ways to prevent falls and how you can use them. falls. I remember it was a beautiful summer day and I figured I'd go for a jog. I wanted to go to Forest Park, which is this gorgeous kind of wilderness area that you can get to even from downtown Portland. Now this isn't a normal, oh, I think I'll go for a jog because I was pretty pregnant. <laughs> and when I would go jogging when I was pregnant, it made me feel really good. Like I'm strong and capable and I can do this. So I took off and I didn't look exactly like a lumbering elephant, <laughs> maybe more like a really waterlogged camel. Um, but anyway, I'm doing my thing. I'm running through, jogging through Forest Park. And lo and behold, of course, a rock or a root or whatever catches my foot and I end up flying and just landing in this spectacular crash. <laughs> on rocks and dirt and mud and I tear up my knee. It was a terrible experience. And I look back and go, wow, sometimes when I think I'm being so logical, I'm really making bad decisions. And that could have really put the baby at risk. I mean, it was a bad idea. But at the time, it seemed like a good idea. Well, let's fast forward to getting older. I don't hear people talking about, oh, I can't wait to go live in a nursing home. I do hear people talking about how they wanna stay at home, enjoying the comfort and privacy of their own space and all of the wonderful things that go along with it. When I do hear people talk about wanting to move to some type of retirement community, I don't hear them saying, yeah, I really wanna be in the part where I'm gonna need a lot of physical help and be pushed around in wheelchairs and things. Well, a huge reason that people have to go into nursing care and can't remain independent doing the things they want to do is because they fall. According to the CDC, every second of every day, an older adult in the United States falls. One out of four older adults in the United States will fall every year. One out of every five falls causes a serious injury like a broken bone or a head injury. Falls are the leading cause of injury and death in older adults. More than 32,000 people fall every single year, and that equates to 88 people dying every single day from falls. It's crazy. Falling and dying sounds like a terrible way to go. But a lot of times people don't think about that happening to themselves. What we do tend to think about is the fact that we could get injured to the extent that we can't live independently. So let's look at those statistics. Every year, 8 million older people fall at a level that requires them to reduce their activity or seek medical attention. More than 95% of hip fractures are caused by falls, usually by falling sideways. And each year, 300,000 older adults are hospitalized because of hip fractures. One New England Journal of Medicine study found that for people who fell one time and weren't seriously injured, their risk for nursing home placement increased by 13%. When you add up the times that people fell once or twice and didn't really injure themselves, plus the people that fell once and actually did injure themselves, it accounted for 26% of nursing home placements. Falls impact everyone around you. Think about it. How many people do you know who have fallen or you are worried about them falling? In my own family, my sweet daddy suffered from Parkinson's disease. If you're not familiar with a disorder, it impacts your ability to make smooth motor movements. So you can't move or walk like you want to. He struggled along, fell several times, but the last time he fell, he broke his hip, barely survived surgery to correct it, went into a nursing home and died shortly thereafter. 
It happens to real people in real situations. Now I talk to my mother and our conversations go something like, oh, hey, I haven't fallen this week, Amy. I think I'm doing pretty good. The consequences of falling are real and they're happening to people that we love. If you'd like to know your own risk for falls, the CDC has a quick and easy questionnaire and I've linked it below. Rate yourself and if you score four or above, you're considered to be at increased risk. But not only is the risk of actual falls bad for you, but it's also bad to be worrying about falling. The fear of falling has actually been defined as an anxiety syndrome in older adults. And it's defined as an exaggerated fear that you'll fall or a sense that you can't help but fall, that you can't stop a fall from happening. It's been estimated to impact up to 58% of older adults. This isn't bad just because people are so anxious about falling, but then it prevents them from doing physical things and social things because they don't want to risk a fall. Once you stop living your life and doing physical and social things, your quality of life goes down. So let's talk about what you can do. The CDC has a brochure on four things you can do to prevent falls, and I've linked it below. There's some common sense things on there. One, go and talk to your doctor about your medications. Some of them can make you dizzy or increase your risk of falling. Secondly, have your eyes checked and your feet checked. Seems like a funny combination, doesn't it? But problems with vision can increase falls and problems with your feet can make your feet not function in a way that's stable and balanced and can also increase your risk. These are easy things to do to be able to reduce your risk of falling. A third concept is let's look where you're living. Yes, we should pick up rugs, we should reduce clutter. And there are some simple and easy steps that you can take. There's a checklist, it's below, and you can look at it and evaluate your own home. So these are all actions that you can take and reduce your risk of falls. But there's something else that you can do that builds over time and changes your body. So it doesn't matter if you're at home or you're out, if the pathway is clear or if there's curbs or steps or rocks, but it can help you reduce your risk of falling. It's a specific type of exercise that has been demonstrated to reduce the risk of falling for older people, and it's called Tai Chi. Tai Chi is a beautiful, graceful form of exercise that combines slow, steady movements with a certain type of controlled breathing. It's low impact, so it doesn't stress your muscles or your joints, so it works for a lot of older people. You can stand or you can be sitting while you do it. It doesn't require special equipment. It can be practiced indoors or outdoors, and you can do it alone or in groups. It's so flexible. A 2018 article in the Journal of Exercise Rehabilitation did a randomized controlled trial looking at the benefit of Tai Chi for older people in falls. Older adults were trained in Tai Chi twice a week for eight weeks. At the end of the trial, the people who did Tai Chi were compared to people who didn't do Tai Chi and were found to have better balance and less risk of falling, but they were also less afraid of falling. Some of the research has suggested that doing Tai Chi in a manner where you build up 50 hours of practice is most beneficial. This might mean that you go to a class one time a week for a year, or maybe you do it twice a week for half a year. But building this up over time is where you really see the benefits. When a person stops practicing Tai Chi, just like every other physical exercise, the benefits slowly fade over time. Tai Chi is becoming more and more popular in the United States. Classes are springing up all over the place and they're coming to most communities and many of them are tailored for older adults specifically. If you can't find one near you, there are online resources available too. Below, I'll put a link to a Tai Chi introduction by a respected Tai Chi practitioner and doctor. He has an entire YouTube video series based on the idea that Tai Chi can be accessible to anyone. I really hope that these ideas have helped you think about how you can keep moving and reduce your risk of falls. Share this with anybody else you think might be worried about falls for themselves or their loved ones. And I can't wait to see you next time.